right, so let's go ahead and get started with uh, taking our static HTML site to a dynamic PHP site. Uh, you can use your Step 18 from uh, Inside Out Project um, from Web 100, or if you did the 0xx project, this what we'll be starting with is Step 18. If you're uncertain or you're just uncomfortable with doing that, you can go ahead and we'll access the step files right here in the project itself. Uh, we can go ahead and click on that and it will download those files. We'll go ahead and show them in the folder <coughs> and we'll extract all. Now that we have them extracted, we can see in here that we have um, all the steps that we want. And, uh, what, one thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get rid of the index.xhtml. We don't want to include that. It's the server file and really all we want is the files that are being used inside the step 18. And um, when I say step 18, this is what I'm talking about. And you're able to navigate and move around and, and there are some pages that are incomplete, but for the most part, the structure of the site is there. So now that we have all these files, the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and open up your IDE. I'll be using Dreamweaver in this case. And we can see in Dreamweaver in our 2xx uh, that we already have, uh, we have that index.html from the server there. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that file. So edit, delete. Yes, and I'm actually going to go ahead up to remote server and I'm going to delete that file as well. So at this point, what we're deleting, if we actually go out and look at our, our site on our host, that's the file that we deleted. If I refresh, we'll, we won't get it anymore. We just get the index. Great. So now we've done that, let's move back to our local host. Let's go ahead and let's select all of these files that we extracted from the download. And let's just go ahead and stick them into our, our local host. And the next thing we can do is let's just go ahead and let's select all those files. Um, the git ignore file, we'll talk about that in a little bit. If for some reason you have it in there, um, let's go ahead and let's cloak that a while. So we right click on it and we go to cloaking and say cloak. What happens is when we synchronize the whole site, it will ignore this file. It will not put that file up. So what I can do now is I can say synchronize, get and put newer files, and I can preview it. And we can see it's wanting to put all these files up, less the git ignore file. So we'll go ahead and say OK to that. We can see the activity happening down here in the bottom of uh, Dreamweaver. Uh, each IDE has a different way of letting you know that something's going on. It's pushing up images at the moment. And one thing we can do while we're waiting for that to upload is just go take a look at our local host now and see what we have there. And we can see now on our, our local host that we actually have that site that we just copied in. So we can work locally or we can, you know, work remotely. We'll see if we're done uploading yet. We can see we're on U, which means, there we go, file activity complete. So we're going to go ahead and check out our 2x site now. And we can see that we are now working on our HTML, static HTML site. The first thing that we want to do is we're going to take this over to a PHP site. And so the best thing that we can do at this point is go ahead and um, change our index.html, which we see here, to a PHP file. And in Dreamweaver, if I change this, it's going to prompt me. It's going to say, hey, there are a bunch of links inside of this site that are pointed to index.html. Would you like to update, update those links in those sites? And I'm going to say, sure, go ahead. So essentially, everywhere that there's a link to the index.html, it's being updated to index.php. And what you can see is happening if you look down here. I have my Dreamweaver on auto upload on save. 
and it's automatically saving as it makes these changes it's automatically saving these pages to the server which by the way you can do that by going into your servers double click on it and in the advance automatically upload files to server on save I'm just going to cancel out of there that lets you know and um, now that we have index PHP here the next thing we're going to do is go out to our remote server and we're going to get rid of the index.html because that index.php is going to take place of that. So now if I come back to local, I can go ahead and I can go out and take a peek and I can see that it's not going to find my index.php file locally. But if I change that to PHP, I'm right back where I started, except that I'm pointing back to a PHP file. Um, you can see I went to the love page, and this was one of the links that it got updated, and you can see it pushes it right back to index.php because I automatically updated them. If I refresh this things page, this should be updated to index.php. So at this point, we're literally working off of our um, first PHP file, and we are ready to start editing it. All right, so there's just a few things that we're going to do in this step. And uh, a couple of them are, if we go in here and we look at our, our step 18, actually, we'll just look right here on our server because we're fresh. And we view source, we can see we have a bunch of comments in here. And we're actually going to tuck these comments into PHP comments and stop sending them out to the browser and just keep them back on the server. And that'll make sense in a minute. Additionally, we're going to go ahead and we're going to update a couple of places where we see a title tag. And we're going to use that title tag um, as a variable and we're going to have a way to just go ahead and put that information out there um, with a PHP variable, return it in the HTML, the results in the HTML. And then the other thing we're also going to do is if we go and we actually look in um, step 200, our example, and we view page source, we can see those comments are gone. But the other thing is we're going to take that variable as well and we're going to use it to make a javascript variable so that it can be used in the, the browser at a later point that that's a variable that's um, available to uh, javascript so let's go ahead and get started on that and the first thing that we want to do is we're in our index.php file we see that it's all html it's all being processed correctly and looks good i'm gonna just do a little formatting here and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a comment at the very top of the page. And it's going to be a PHP comment. And if we save that, we'll see. And uh, we have our multi-line comment that we put in here. And if we save that, we're just giving a little information of what we're going to do here. And if we go out and we take a look and we look on our local host, and we refresh, you'll see, of course, that comment does not appear in the uh, browser because it's PHP and comments do not make their way into the HTML. Um, so at this point, the next thing that we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead, like we said, and we're gonna put some variables throughout here. Uh, but the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and finish with our comments. And I'm going to do a little copy and pasting but uh, you'll be able to follow along. So I'm going to take this HTML comment and I just basically wrapped it in PHP tags and put a single line comment. And I'm going to do that the same all the way through for uh, all the comments that we see here. And you can see I'm just basically pushing out um, a PHP comment rather than a HTML comment, which means that that comment will um, again not appear in the browser it's a great way to keep notes and keep people updated on things that are going on in your your development uh, without it making it, it, it making its way out to um, the user to um, sometimes you want to put comments in there that maybe you don't want competition or even a client to see and so there we have I just updated all the comments in the site right now if I go out to my local before I save 
in a view source, you can see all these comments that are in here. Right? All these HTML comments. So now if I go back and I save, remember when I save, it's automatically pushing it to the server as well. And I go back out here and I refresh my local host and I view page source again, you'll see that none of those comments are embedded in the page. Makes for, uh, makes for a nice way to communicate internally with a team. Also, because I'm automatically pushing out, if I refresh, we should get the same results. No comments, a little bit of dirty HTML, but we'll clean that up as we go. Awesome. So our, our next goal um, in, the, uh, in this lesson is to go ahead and um, create a variable, a PHP variable, and distribute it, uh, use it throughout the site so that we can put the site name in one place and use it wherever we want, including in JavaScript. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go ahead and, um, again, for the sake of time, I'm going to copy and paste. And I'm going to actually put a little room in here just because we can. And I'm going to paste this variable in here. Of course, I have the dollar sign. I named it site name. And I have the value of inside out 2xx. And now what's pretty cool about that is anywhere in the site that I want that information, that I want that title, I can just call that PHP variable and it will display it. So inside my title tags, I'll go ahead and I'll put that in there. And then also, I'm going to do it in my header as well. And if I hit save and I go out and I check on my local host or even my remote host because it's just pushing, you'll see that that title was placed there. And um, you'll see that it was also updated up here. Uh, if you watch here, because my files were, were updated, I can just go ahead and refresh. And you see that everything aligned with that variable. At this point, you don't want to have to reestablish JavaScript variables to be used later. And we don't have that site name going anywhere out here as far as JavaScript variables go. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to write some code in there that actually just establishes a JavaScript variable for us that can be called on at any time from inside the HTML or JavaScript. The best way that we can do that at this point is um, we can go ahead and we can create our script tags. Let me clean up my code a little bit. We can go ahead and we can create our script tags, opening and closing. We can declare a JavaScript variable. And then inside of single or double quotes, whichever, I like to use single, um, we can go ahead and echo out the site name, which means now if I hit save and I go out and I take a look at my code again, I refresh and I right click and view source, we can see that I'm actually declaring a variable in here. And um, that variable is now a global variable and it's available to any JavaScript in this page. Again, I am automatically pushing. So if I refresh and I view page source, same thing. Awesome. So now we have uh, started to make our page dynamic. We've uh, included a way to go ahead and um, give ourselves a, a variable value in both uh, JavaScript and PHP. And the last thing I'm going to do is uh, I don't like the way that uh, Dreamweaver necessarily uh, puts things together. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a little code cleaning. Um, staying clean uh, during development is probably your your greatest thing that you can do. I like indentations. Um, and actually, we don't need to indent HTML because it's on the outmost. But we'll go ahead and we'll even tuck in our, our JavaScript as we go through. We'll tighten up our header um, information a little bit. And we'll take a look at that. Everything looks good in our header. Um, so what we'll do is I'll clean it up in here just pull everything together a little more. I don't like the way that it did the title. So I'll throw that up there like that. Um, now I'll take the entire head 
and I'll indent it in because I want it inside that HTML body, that HTML tag. Same thing here. Just want a little PHP code before the body. Uh, get rid of these, these dead spaces because I like when it looks nicer outside there. Uh, my header looks good enough to me that I'll just go ahead and do a quick format on that by collapsing it, pushing it in. Same thing with my section. I'll just come down section and footer. I'll, I'll bump that in and then I'll bump it in the body and I'll leave the HTML out there and I'll open up the header again. We can see that. We'll hit save. We'll go out, refresh localhost, view page source. We can see we're much cleaner on our HTML. Um, I probably would go ahead and just clean clean up whatever's going on there, which I believe comes down to uh, this spacing here. So if we do that, we refresh, we can see that we got that. And that HTML tag just has some spacing in it because we're putting spacing in between our PHP. Again, what I'm doing is just trying to keep my code clean so that it um, looks nice and is easy to read, uh, easy to manage. I'll close that off, do a refresh, do a refresh. I'm going to go ahead and hit inspect because I want to look for errors right out of the gate. And I'm going to do inspect on both local and on my remote host because uh, they're two different servers. They could have different configurations. They could have different things going on that I really need to see. Um, check that out. We look good. We're clean. We look good. We're clean. Our variables there, view page source, we can see our variable, we can see that our code is nice and clean, and that will wrap up this, uh, this part of the session. So uh, we'll see you in the next, uh, the next step where we merge into master.